Coming up in this episode, I'm going to discuss why I struggled to keep up with the podcast last year and the steps I've taken so far to get ready to publish my crime thriller novella, Missing. Welcome to the Authorpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, thriller writer, Amelia D. Hay. On this podcast, I will bring you writing, book marketing, and self-publishing advice so that you can create your dream author business, build your author platform, and be creatively independent. You can find the episode show notes and lots more information on the podcast page at ameliahay.com forward slash podcast. Hello, writers. Before we dive into my exciting publishing news, I want to first talk about a slight change to the podcast and why I struggled with consistently publishing episodes and what I plan to do to overcome these issues in the future. Last year, I struggled with my mental health due to a few different issues. This struggle led me to fall behind in my content creation schedule and production schedule. I won't bore you with the details here, but I had a lot to do with the loss of my aunt, feeling isolated and other life issues. Over on my YouTube channel, I do have a behind the scenes vlog where I discuss some of these issues. For those of you who are curious, I'll leave a link in the show notes in your favorite podcasting app. With my mental health in mind, I've decided to make a few changes to the podcast to give myself regular breaks. This means the official start date for the show will be on Thursday the 6th of February and that episode will be on genre expectations. Obviously, there will be no episodes in January. Going forward, there will be no episodes published in January and December of every year. And I'll be taking regularly scheduled breaks. So this means a week off in April and August. On top of this, there will also be a short break between seasons two and three. All of these breaks are scheduled into my content calendar, so I will let you know about these in advance so they won't catch you by surprise. I feel that by having these regular breaks that I will get some time off and have an opportunity to be a few episodes ahead of schedule which has been something I've not been able to master. Now that I've said all of that I will drop bonus episodes throughout the year either on a Thursday or a Saturday but these will be sporadic. I hope this helps you understand what's been going on with me and explains the sporadic nature of this podcast. Naturally, I plan on learning from my mistakes, creating content regularly and announcing breaks as they come up. Thanks for listening and remember to stay tuned for my behind the scenes author diary updates. Coming up next on the show is Amelia's Behind the Scenes podcast diary. It's an exclusive look at the behind the scenes misadventures of the 30-something thriller writer. Discover how close she is to releasing her latest novel, hear exciting details about upcoming writing projects, and discover the lessons she has learned along her writing journey so you don't have to make the same mistakes. So make sure that you stick around. And if you don't, have a great day and thank you for listening. Coming up in this behind the scenes author diary update, I'm going to discuss where I'm at in the publishing process for Missing, my thoughts and plans on how I'll self-publish my crime thriller novella and a few more marketing ideas. First, let's talk about editing. In the previous episode, I mentioned that I had doubts about the book title for Missing. As you can probably tell, I'm sticking with that title thanks to an episode of the Career Author podcast I listened to during December. To be honest, I really feel that I just overthought that that whole book title dilemma because I found another book within the same subgenre on Amazon and I panicked and I was like, oh my God, there's another book with the same title, but it's it's the same title, but it's a very different story. But anyway, back to the Career Author podcast. Just in case you're curious, the episode was titled How to Choose a Title for Your Novel. I'll add a link to that episode in the show notes in your favorite podcast app. Since the last episode, I finished two rounds of light edits and I've submitted the book to my proofreader and I got the book 
back and it's starting to look professional. It is, when I look back at the first early fast draft of Missing, back when it was called No Loose Ends, it does look, it's the same story. Like the story hasn't, the overall global story hasn't changed, but I've added things to it. I've taken stuff away that I felt wasn't necessary. And I feel that it's a more stronger story than what it was before. And I've learned a lot and I've grown a lot during the editing process. Looking back, I wished I created the back matter for Missing before I submitted it to my line editor and proofreader, purely because it would be nice to have a professional edit on those parts, but they don't, so naughty Millie. But I did put it through Grammarly, Pro Writing Aid, I wrote it out loud, and I'm considering putting it through Autocrit possibly. Maybe not, maybe that's a bit too extreme, but it's been checked several times by different people, so hopefully there's nothing too disastrous in there. Now that I've looked back and created a list of things that I've done for this podcast, I've actually done quite a bit in terms of pre-publishing. So in this next section, I'm quite literally just going to rattle off exactly what I've done and why I've chosen to do it. So far, I've formatted the ebook and paperbacks in vellum, and I've decided to publish in these formats. So that's ebook, paperback, and large print paperback. The ebook cover, paperback, and large print paperback covers are ready and have been uploaded to KDP. The sizes I chose are 5 inches by 8 inches for the paperback and 6 inches by 9 inches for the large print edition, both with cream paper and a matte cover. I've realized that depends on what designers you talk to. A lot of designers do prefer matte because they think, well, this one particular designer has said to me that he prefers matte over glossy because he feels that glossy just makes the book look really cheap. And generally with traditional paperbacks, it's actually a matte cover unless there's some type of embossing, which I clearly not, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I've stuck with a matte cover. It does mute the colours quite a bit and glossy does make the colours quite rich in tone, but the cream and the matte will make the book a little bit more professional looking. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. While searching on Amazon, I noticed there was a marketplace for large print thriller books based on Amazon's search autofill and the lack of books available. So I thought I would serve the market and just see what happens. Coincidentally, when you do the search for large print and then genre, what I've noticed is a lot of people paying for ads with these key terms for large print paperback and when you look at the paperback it's not actually large print so it's an underserved market so the fact that it's been auto-filled like I'm typing in large print and then my genre means tells me that there are people on Amazon looking for that and they're not they don't have a lot of options so I'm just going to see if if I can get readers who are looking for large print paperbacks people like who are my grandmother's age are probably do want large print so why not serve that audience through the KDP dashboard I've ordered proof copies and I'm waiting for them to be dispatched by Amazon. During the last few days, I've also purchased 10 ISBNs from Nielsen UK for £164, that's including sales tax. And I've created a spreadsheet to track the usage because I live in London. If you live in America, you probably need to purchase your ISBNs from a different place. But I've decided that on Create Space, sorry, not Create Space, I've used the ISBNs for the paperback and the large print paperback on Amazon and in Ingram Spark, which leads me to mention I've also decided to use Ingram Spark for expanded distribution just so people can rock up to their local bookstore and actually order the book if that's how they want to order their book. Because I don't want to retrain people how to purchase. I just want to make it easy for them to purchase in the way that they want to purchase it. And I'm fully aware that for someone to order my book through their local bookstore, they have to know it exists. So it most likely will be be people who are waiting for it and then it'll be a word of mouth situation after that. In light of the fees charged for changes to the book, I'm going to do the proof checks with KDP print first before uploading the books to Ingram Spark. And the reason why I know to do this is I've been thinking about self-publishing since 2013 and I've listened to lots and lots of people talk about the fees Ingram Spark charges you for making changes to the book after you've submitted it. So I'm just going to avoid that scenario. Do all of the changes based 
based on the proof that I get from KDP, then upload a completely separate files that are Ingram Spark compatible and ask for that proof and hope, crossing my fingers, that there's nothing else that needs to be changed. We'll see what happens. That's the plan. There's also a nice discount available for Ingram Spark if you're a member of the Alliance of Independent Authors or Ally for short. This is my second year as an associate member and I highly recommend signing up for a membership because it's a great organization. I'll leave a link to Ally in the show notes in your favorite podcasting app. Over Christmas, I decided to work on a French translation with the help of Roland. And when I decided, and what I mean by decided is I kind of thought, well, I've got French family and I'm quite familiar with how French people buy books. So I kind of thought, well, my husband's French, he speaks French as his first language and he has a PhD, so he's written a book, something of book length, so he understands that it takes time. And I simply mentioned to him, you know what, I want to do a French translation and he offered to do it. That's totally how it's going to work. I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to add him as an author and share royalties that way. I'll have to have a look at how you deal with foreign translation and the rights to that. So we'll just see what happens. I'll do research, think about it, talk about it with him. In that discussion I originally had with my husband, Roland, we decided that we weren't going to use artificial intelligence for the first draft and him to simply go through and do revisions he said he would rather do a bespoke translation and just go through and make translating choices as he reads he would rather have total control than just rely on a artificial intelligence I guess if I didn't have a French husband I probably would do artificial intelligence then find French beta readers and then go down the route of line editing and proofreading And because French is Roland's first language, he can help translate the marketing materials like ad copy. So I can actually market this translation to its intended audience. A lot of people who do go into translations into other languages because they don't speak the translated language, they struggle to market the book themselves. But since I have extended family who are French, I can I can ask them to help me translate the marketing materials so it makes sense to the people who are looking at the ads. So I guess that gives me a bit of an advantage and I might be able to move a few copies, a few more copies than if I didn't market it. While we're talking about marketing a foreign translation, I'm considering creating an email list for French readers and publishing wide because French readers buy ebooks from a store called Fnac. And this store sells Kobo e-readers. They do have English translations on their bookshelves, but it's predominantly paperbacks. The French paperbacks look very different to the the English market paperbacks. The covers are quite pretty in England, whereas in France they're just quite bear it's it's quite a shock when you see the the books because people in france they do like to buy books in bookstores In the beginning of January, I created a BookBub account in preparation to claim my book when it's available and it was surprisingly fun. Like I was a bit too excited about the fact that I now have a BookBub author account, even though it's completely bare, but yes, super excited. Since December, I've been considering planning a blog tour, partly because I want to receive a bit of feedback and have a few reviews on Amazon after I've published, but I suspect that it's too late to hire this service since the book is due to be released on Thursday the 30th of January. I've also started to create a marketing plan. Let me know if you're interested in hearing me share what I plan to do to market my book once it's released and my the thought process behind the decisions I made. And obviously I'll do a follow-up on that saying, you know, what are the results? What actually happened? What will I do next time? Even though I've done all of those things, there are still things that I need to do. The first thing on that list is write my author notes for missing. I've actually done this between the time I wrote the notes and I started to record this 
podcast episode. The second thing is write the final scenes for my crime thriller short story, The Lawn. You can sign up for my mailing list and read the crime thriller short story at authoradhay.com forward slash blog forward slash the hyphen lawn. I'll include a link to this in the show notes. And I actually finished this at 9 p.m. last night. I went through and I, well, I finished, I think it was the revisions and the line editing last night and I uploaded it into Vellum and then I, up, and then I exported that, uploaded that into BookFunnel and it's now available. Since then, I've gone through and made a few minor changes. This is a book that hasn't been professionally edited, but I did go through missing and I took I took on board the things that I learned during those line edits and proofreads and I put that up there. One of the things my line editor did say to me, which caught me by surprise, was I actually was good. She thought I was good at grammar and I kind of thought I sucked. So it was sort of weird hearing that feedback because it was feedback I never expected to hear because I always thought that I was terrible at spelling and grammar. But I guess because I've used a few programs, I've used three different programs to help me get those things right. I've done a lot of research into how to format dialogue correctly and the difference between British formatting and American formatting. Like I've done a lot of research, so I guess it sort of did pay off. So that is done. And and if you like crime thrillers, you're more than welcome to download it. It's free but you have to sign up to my email list so it's not quite free and I'm also considering publishing a short story a month as well the last thing that I need to do is finish writing the third draft of the book blurb for missing and coincidentally I've been putting this task off for quite some time but I've read a few different books on writing blurbs to help me get this right. I do have a second draft which is currently on my website and is temporarily in my KDP account and it's also on the back of my book as the book blurb but I really need to get the sales copy right and in case you're wondering I've read Writing Killer Blurbs and Hooks by Adam Croft. That book, I wouldn't say that's about writing a full blurb, but it is about writing that first hook in the science of getting the hook right. So it's still a good read. Mastering Amazon Descriptions by Brian D. Meeks and How to Write a Sizzling Synopsis by Brian Cohen. I'll list these books in the podcast app But on my blog, I'll have the official links to the bookstores and those links will be affiliate links. It's just, I have a funny feeling some podcasts, one in particular that's very popular, doesn't actually like you using affiliate links to other bookstores. It's not a banana, but it's a, yeah, that one. (laughs) And they don't like you using affiliate links in their podcast show notes. Well, they don't like me doing that. So I can't do that. So I'll put them on my website. And on my website, I do point out that I use affiliate links. So if I use affiliate links in the blog post, down the bottom, I'll have this gray box that points it out. I'm using affiliate links in here. Just so that you're aware that I might be making a cent off it. It really is a cent. Like it's nothing crazy. Nothing to write home about. During November and December, I launched a new podcast for lovers of crime, mystery, thriller and suspense novels called Thriller Novel Nerd. Basically, Thriller Novel Nerd was originally just book reviews on my website, on my author website, and I've done book hauls and other book related things like that, that are really just about mystery, thriller, suspense and crime novels. And then I decided I'm tired of writing blog posts even though I'm a bit sporadic about the content creation part of it, I do love podcasting. Essentially, the podcast is a virtual book club for lovers of these genres. So far, I've published an inaugural episode, which is really a what to expect from this podcast episode, plus three shows. The next episode will be released tomorrow, which is Sunday the 19th of January. And more importantly, it's a bi-monthly podcast. So that's one episode every second Sunday. And I feel that's something manageable. There's very little scripting on that podcast. It's me just talking about books. So there is a, there's room for me to rant. I'm going to try not do that obviously, but there's room for that. And it's more relaxed. It's just me chatting about books and it's something that's easy to do. So I do have to sort of create a list of notes just so the episode has structured and I'm not waffling on about whatever's 
annoying me that day that I'm just sticking to the particular topic. And after this, I'm about to record that episode. So that'll be fun. Eventually, I do plan on interviewing authors in the crime, mystery, thriller and suspense genres once I figure out the tech logistics. And in terms of interviewing, I won't be talking about how a particular author has achieved success in their writing and publishing and how another writer can replicate that if you will. I won't be talking about that. What I, what these interviews will be about, they will be short interviews and it will be from a fan's perspective. The things a fan would ask their favourite author because it's that's what it's about. It's about, it's a book club and it's for readers. It's not, even though writers are readers, it's not for writing writers from the perspective. This is how you write a thriller. It's more, this is how I got started and this is what sort of inspired me to create this character and this is why I enjoy writing this character and stuff like that. It's an opportunity for an author to talk to, to reach their fans and talk to them about their books. So that's what that podcast will be about. I think in terms of tech logistics, what I will do is I'll Skype my mum. I'll try and record and just sort of see what happens and see how that sounds and go from there. And until I figure it out, that's what I'm going to have to do. I'll, I'll probably do that a few times. Obviously, I'll ask my mum's permission to just record that as a test. So I'll be doing a few test recordings and then I will interview people as they contact me for the podcast I will there are a few people I particularly want to reach out to the indie authors that I know that write in those genres so I'll reach out to them and I'll do those interviews first because I'm most comfortable with those and then I'll start opening my podcast up for interviews but it won't be I don't want it to be just about interviewing authors because that can get boring too I want to deliver on what I promised with that podcast That's what I've been up to since the last episode of the Authorpreneur podcast. I have to admit this week I had this really weird moment where I was looking at the physical book file in the KDP paperback previewer and it dawned on me I've written a book. It's a weird realisation to have two or three years since you started writing said book because... I've seen the book so many times on my phone and on my Kindle and on my iPad. Because it's virtual, I don't think it's really sunk in to me. I don't think the reality of what I've done has sunken in until a few nights ago when I was looking on my KDP dashboard and I was like, I, re I sort of started to panic a bit. I'm like, I've written a book, people are going to read this. And yeah, it was such a weird thing to experience so close to publishing. The next time I talk to you will be on the other side of pressing that publish button. So this podcast will change as I get more experience. I'm also thinking about sharing my book sales, but I'm thinking about doing that in Patreon just so it's a closed group of people who actually want to hear about that instead of just broadcasting it to everyone and their dogs and I'm not just talking about sales figures either like how much ends up in my bank account what I'm spending to publish my books and whether and how close I am to breaking even and making a profit because I have experience in finance I tend to look at numbers just as numbers and I'm quite happy to talk about it and to give people a realistic view this is what happened with me after I pressed publish this is what I've done this is how much I've spent and really give an honest account of my earnings but I want to do that in a safe environment thank you for listening the next time I see you will be on the, will be on the other side of pressing publish I can't remember what I wanted to say this is why I have a script by the way I clearly suck at ending things anyway thank you for listening happy reading and writing and I'll chat to you next time hopefully with good news that people have purchased my book fingers crossed like strangers not just my mum and Roland like people I don't know anyway thank you for listening and I'll see you next time bye Thank you for listening to the Authorpreneur podcast. If you love this episode, then hit the subscribe button and leave a review on your favorite podcasting app. I'm your host, Amelia D. Hay, and I'll see you next week for another episode.